Welcome to the show. It. <laughs> <You're> happy? <laughs> yes, I'm happy you didn't swear on this tape. So uh, this is going to be another thing. We 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 got a. <laughs> so we got a bag as beer, and it's a paper bag. So it's it's environmentally conscious. Yes, because we care about that. We care about how much energy it takes to recycle paper. It's unconscionable. Yeah, but uh, it's nice. It's it's a fine bag. Yeah, okay, so LCBO um, does these blind bags for beer. Um, in this case, we got it from a location where the beer guy, it, he has, it's an actual job title, but I don't know what you call it. It's not, like, he's, he's not a Cicero master. Yeah, like, he's, he, it's, there's a, but there's a guy in every LCBO who just is the beer guy, and he's super enthusiastic, and he has a bunch of social media feeds, we'll link him in the pants bar, uh, or whatever. That's but, the official name? Yeah, well, uh, that or the doobity doo. Oh, okay. See, I'm, I'm very behind on all of this, so yes. I need to catch you. Yeah, so, this guy has put together a wine bag of four cans, uh, you can tell, just based on the shape, and these are uh, the newest brews to arrive, um, also known as Three New, One Not New, a.k.a. Timmy's IPA Challenge Pack Number 2, Asterisk Requires Big Boy Pants. So, we... I don't have any other kind. Actually, I, I, I'm not wearing pants at all, so we'll... we'll yeah. So, so I, I'm the big boy pants for both of us right now. Yeah, he has, he has to double down on being a big boy. That's okay. So we are going to open the bag, because I didn't peek, and we're going to see what's in here, and we're going to taste it and think about we're it. We're going to judge it. We're going to judge it and tame it, and that'll be that. It's the only time we judge anybody. Everybody else gets a free card, but when it comes to beer, we, we give a shit. All right. So first thing out of the bag is... Mill Street's hopped and confused. I'm half. I, I'm half in agreement with the title. Yeah. Uh, all right. So this beer is really hoppy, but not bitter. It's a Kolsch, apparently. Uh, it's juicy, herbal, floral, smooth, crisp, and doesn't taste like anything else. It's a sessionable version of a non-sessionable style. Okay, so this is a recipe out of Mill Street. After is that a Labatt buyout, so this is going to be. Oh, we had a bad experience last night, so, so these guys are trying to recover right now. I have no hope for this. Oh god, I have no. no hope for this. Well, that descriptor was basically how many beer buzzwords can we jam on the can? Yeah, I I do like this art. Oh yeah, the art's Dean. Do I I do like me some good can art? Beavers and geese, the easiest way to sell anything to Canadians. Well, there's Especially also maple syrup and canoes on there. There's also, um, you know, a bear and a canoe. Yeah, but we're not getting a proper fish. rendition of bear, so why bring that up? <sighs> okay, look. We can talk about erotic literature based on Haida mythology on a completely different day. Or never. <laughs> I am not... A, you were I am not... Never. <laughs> yeah, I'm not an expert enough in any one of those things to comfortably explain bear. I feel like I can acquire the expertise, but I'm not totally sure I want to. So this is pretty that's, beer colored. That's a little uh, cloudy. Yeah. It smells smells like it Smells like juice. Eh. Eh. It's not bad. Like it's it's drinkable. Hey dog. Yeah, like this just you want wow, help? The taste just disappears. Wanna help dog? It's it's a sessionable IPA basically. Yeah. I wouldn't say IPA. I would say God, it's got that domestic thing. Again, yeah. It's... Okay. So I don't know how to describe it except for this set of flavors that happen after you swallow. Oh. After you swallow a domestic beer, nobody wants your bone coat. 
that. After you smell a domestic beer, there's this really specific after aftertaste, or at least I get it. And it's yeah, it, it I, sits across the tongue. I've just always called it domestic beer thing. It's weird because I don't get it with any. <sighs> yeah. I've had worse. I've had worse everything. Yeah. But. No, this is this is nothing special. You've this is nothing special. It's better than last night. Okay, yeah. Uh, that's that's yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. Okay. The next one out of I feel like I'm gonna be taking a Tylenol with that. Yeah. Next one out of the bag. <laughs> Hey! hey! So Nickelbrook headstock. This is probably our not new. Then it's it's an old reliable. It's good. Just in general, yeah. In general, Nickelbrook is they're they're good people. Yeah. Except when they pick I, fights with us. Or yeah. Apparently, fights with them. Apparently, we're we, we're a fighty bunch, even though we like them. Yeah, we actually really enjoy what they make, but once in a while, their social media guy decides, mm -hmm. and if you're watching, mm -hmm. we're tagging you again. Yeah, <laughs> come on. <laughs> no, seriously, this is good. Yeah, yeah no, okay, so this. if you have not had a chance to try it, it's got uh, five malts, two row, pale ale, carastain, carafoam, flaked wheat, hopwise, it's Simcoe, Amarillo, Equinox, and Mosaic, so it's pretty broad, but pretty balanced. Yep. Look. There. That is. That is a lot of carbonation. It's colors like straw. Those tops. Mm. And just a nice one. Yeah. Yeah. Still headstock. Yeah. Still nice. Still good. Nice idea. Like just nice. Nice pine right across. The top. Yeah, just, just just taste some trees. Oh, it dawns on me. I have no idea if the leaves won or lost tonight. Should check that later. God, I know the rap. I think it's the Raptors. No, the Leafs are playing. Oh, okay. uh, they were they were up four three against Boston last I checked. That was that was two hours. Ago. So yeah. yeah. Who cares? Hockey. Mostly, it just matters to me how it affects my training. Yeah, this, this is it. We we only care about playoff hot, playoff sports in Toronto because we don't want to ride the bus with people who have watched playoff sports in Toronto. Because they're all assholes. And that, like, that's, that is not, I hate these people. No, seriously, they're just the Toronto fans who are assholes and are drunk on my bus. Yeah. That's all. That's it. And if you're a Toronto fan who gets polluted, goes to these games, goes on to a go bus, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you, you've you been that guy. Yeah. And yes, yes, they're very responsible of you to take transit home. Raise the glass to that. But don't be an ass on my bus. Just, just sit quietly. Yeah. Sit quietly. The concert people, they don't bother anyone else. No. No. Mostly because they are high. Like, I, I, I remember catching the last bus home after Roger Waters came. Jesus Christ, that oh. thing must have sounded like a gray hue. Oh, it, it it was full, and it was quiet, and people fell asleep. And I'm like, man, I hope none of you are missing your stops. Yeah, right? <laughs> this is going to be bad for you. That, by the way, alarms on cell phones, great way to prevent them. Mm -hmm. All right, into the bag. In the bag. Boogie, 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 boogie. Boogie, boogie. And it is Octopus Wants to Fight. This is one of my favorite things in the world. Is this the 8.5? Uh, 6.2. 6.2. Oh, okay. Yeah. And what the... What is it? Well, this is it. The, the label on the outside. It does have... It can't tell us what's in it, but it has to tell us that it is beer and how much... Actual and the alcohol content and the actual 
volume of it because liquor labeling laws must be obeyed yeah. even in the face of mystery. But no, um, honestly, uh, if it was so that uh, Octopus Wants to Fight is a sequel to Route 666 in that um, it is 666 with six moths, six hops, uh, and th this is now, you know, 8 and 8, and ideally it should have been 8.8 .8, uh, ABV to match Route 666's 6.6, .6, but yep. there's only so, much, so many things you can achieve in a gimmick. Yep. For numbering. But anyway, now this stuff is great. I caught it in 1010 series limited last year, and it's still one of my favorites. It targeted 88 by me. You're seeing that on the side of the can there. Uh, yeah, no, they. No, they actually did hit 88 IV. Doesn't matter, three more than you can taste. But still, great try, guys. But you, you gotta get. Gotta, Again, there's a theme. Oh, I know, there's and I love it. Like, like, props to where it is, but you break 85, nobody can taste it, and that's okay. That's okay. Like, I've had a 110, and they were real proud. They made a 110, and who gives a shit? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a little more gold. Oh, wow, and that is cloudy. Cloudy? Is this filtered? I doubt it's filtered. Will they tell me that? Me look into my crystal beer glass and tell me your fucking future. <laughs> future is hard to see. Not actually as hoppy smelling as the Nickelbrook. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, well. Yeah, no, it, it's, again, 8 and 8 is a really good balance, but it's still full of flavor. Just full. I could go for pizza. I can always go for pizza. Yes. That's that's a that's a given. I grew up with Ninja Turtles. That's literally you I can can't. just constantly consume pizza. But no, this this is a pizza beer. Yes. This is this is like oh, it goes nice with a soft cheese, but also a spicy sausage. Yeah, and really, that that's half the things you want on pizza to yeah. start. That is that is tasty. Fight you. I can't fight an octopus. I can totally fight an octopus. He has four boxing gloves on four that, of them. That's fantastic. I will get three kids in a trench coat to fight that octopus. Also, uh, Great Lakes has just, a while back, they brought in a new artist and their label game went on point. That is, that is suitably important. Like, the, this, this, is, this is just one of my favorite bits of can art. I'm buying a poster of it. I don't know where I'm going to put that poster. But it's gonna be rad. Well, that octopus is clearly ready to fuck up somebody's shit. Oh, yeah. Like, if we ever get another punch out, that needs to replace soda puppings. <laughs> really? He's gotta be the third guy? No, I think he's gotta be the guy before King Hippo. But, th well, that's it. It's like, you don't wanna replace King Hippo. Can't replace the King Hippo. Yeah, there's no reason to replace Glass Joe because nobody cares. Yeah. Um, maybe replace one of the really racist ones, like the Indian guy. I never remember him. Yeah. Um, Piston Honda. Yeah, but Piston Honda's like the only Japanese character. Yeah. And he's been... What? Was he less racist in the Wii version? I think so. He it's wasn't really... He wasn't really racist in the first place. He was just a big Japanese guy, and the most racist thing about him was the headband. Which... Kind really of does happen. But that really does happen. Yeah, in so athletics, so yeah. so it's it's give and take. That's why I'm saying you get rid of Soda Popinski. Like he's supposed to be Polish, apparently, and you're like, I don't know any of this. This guy shouldn't have teeth. Like this guy should look like the Nuka Cola shit. Because she's bringing us treats, you see. Yeah. Treats being her bones, which we don't want. She doesn't understand. Because that's how dogs work. Yeah. But why are you even down here? Hanging out. One of the guys. Yeah, but that's bruised you. Yeah. Dog. All right. Last one. Mystery bag. Mystery bag. Is... Oh, Great Lakes uh, Robo Hop. Oh. 
Oh man! Double IPA. I'm this... gonna try this. Yeah, this is this is the eight five then. So yeah, this is another one out of Tank Ten, which is um, their experimental series. Because I guess they only have ten tanks, and they saved the last one for weird, crazy ideas. Ah, uh, what do we know? What do we? What do we know? Okay. So, like, so they, they tell little stories about their characters. This one's crazy. Robohop has a backstory and everything. As a child, Robohop was shunned for his laser beam eyeballs, bulbous hop-shaped torso, and robotic limbs. During adolescence, however, things changed for our hero. He captained his high school hockey team, routinely took over dance floors, and thus garnered a lot of attention from his female classmates. Today, Robohop battles the blandness of the big boys by making this killer hoppy and bracingly bitter beer. So, um... It is worth noting, Peter Weller couldn't fucking move in that thing, so the idea of him winning any dance competitions... Look, there's only one move Peter Weller needed to do to win a dance contest while dressed as Robohop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, the gun, I know. Yeah, shoot the other dancers! Yeah. And, okay, so, no. stats-wise, 8.5 alcohol by volume, and our IVU count is... Yes! Mm. There's no theme for this one. No, right? no theme, so I'm just leaving it to you ah. and your knowledge of doppel IPAs. I'm going to say 100. It is exactly 100. There you go. Again, can't taste it. Can't, but, can't taste the difference between, in, you know, 90 and 95. No one can. Well, some sort of super person could. There is someone out there with that palate. It ain't me. Now, the test for this, like, the, the octopus was, goes well with pizza. This is, does it go well with RoboCop? <laughs> yes. That is the test here. And, and, gonna, and proper gonna RoboCop. This. Yeah, we're going to break not, this. Not this remake RoboCop nonsense. You know, I'm going to cry because most of my body's gone. Fuck off. I mean, Alex Murphy doesn't give a shit. Dead or alive, you're going with him. On a scale of Sam Jackson as Bill O'Reilly... Versus Kurtwood Smith is the most dangerous drug dealer in fiction. Let's find out. Let's find out. Okay. I'm going to see how many Robocop jokes I can pack into this bit. <laughs> okay. I like that, the smell. As a Face full of everything. You said this is 8.5, right? Yeah. This is too easy to drink for that. It's too easy to drink for 8.5. Which means you will fall trying to climb up the stairs and waggle your Yeah, you'll just, you'll just what, wobble around. Wobble around. You know what? I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> I think this, this costs five. It, wow, fuck! <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would love to be able to buy it for a dollar. But uh, beer tax is pretty lame out here. Yeah. And also, I presume, the sheer amount of stuff involved in making this does justify the stag. No, this is... This is dangerously tasty. Because <laughs> it's like, right, no, 8.5s should not be easy to drink, because that's how people fall down. <laughs> this, is, this is it. It's... Once upon a time, strong beers were terrible, and you knew what you were getting into. Well, facts, right? Tastes like nail polish for me. Facts, uh, oh god. Laker ice. Oh, any, well, anything ice. Yeah. Anything ice. Like, it kicks you in the teeth and you go, man, Molson cold shots, those are god-awful. Yeah. Nobody should drink that. But, but, it taught you a lesson. You learn that, and, that going, that how smashed per dollar per can you, you have to you have to get, is a bad way to decide how to buy beer. Yep. And now, 8.5, and this is 
delicious. Yeah, no, I'm choosing not to just gulp this thing down because there's no drag on it. Oh, I'm I'm acknowledging the fact that it's like eleven at night, so I'm just getting bad at it. So I can get a little wrecked. Get a little wrecked. Oh, that is that is nice and hoppy right at the end too. Oh yeah, lingers. That, that is lingers. That is a little delicious. cascady. Yeah. Oh. oh, that is that warrants. Yeah. So kind of want to watch RoboCop now. <laughs> well, I mean, it does go with RoboCop. Yeah, no. Determine that we 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 need to see, you know, Dick Jones get arrested. I work for Dick Jones. <laughs> You know what? What? In general, my conclusion is RoboCop goes. So. Children's parties? Yeah! <laughs> I'm sorry! I was born in the 80s! I remember when RoboCop was a cartoon show, and I had RoboCop toys. <laughs> and underoos? No. Because RoboCop, an R rated <laughs> movie for the kids. What? There were a lot of R-rated movies. Terminator 2! No, there were a lot of R-rated movies that got cartoon spin-offs, and I'm still sitting here decades later thinking, no. Really? Well, remember, it's the video games that made us violent. No, I'm not, just... not the fact that by the age of six I had watched Robocop. Because <laughs> at six you're ready for the joke. You're ready to get that this is satire. Like, you know, we got a scene where Robocop's hand just folds down and he's got a big fucking knife in it. Right in Kurt Ruth Smith's neck. Oh yeah, no, six years old, I can, I can totally... We're already, we're, well, we're all ready for just everyone emptying all of their magazines into Mr. Murphy. Yeah. At the Blows the hand right up. Mark. I, but admittedly, 80s kids, you know, we grew up into and the end of the Cold War. So yeah, by the time you hit like seven, you're sitting there smoking cigarettes and going, what the fuck is going on with the budget? Right? Like, yeah. Childhood was not a thing. Childhood would childhood did not exist. As much as you had to be up at 6.30 to catch the start of cartoons. Even the, the cartoons were violent as hell. Mutant League was great. Mutant League Hockey, the cartoon. Yeah, that's a great idea. Let's make Highlander a cartoon for kids. Yes. A, a franchise that is specifically about beheading yeah. people. Yeah, and still include that. We still have to have the decapitation. Otherwise, nobody's going to believe it's Highlander, right? <laughs> right. That's, that's a big deal. Why did every Highlander sequel and spinoff have to be in the post-apocalyptic future? Because Highlander, Highlander 1 did not allow for a sequel, and somebody went, but I like money. Yes. So then they just bullshit out a sequel about them being aliens and the world coming to an end. Crap happens. No, I mean, even when they tried to do the trilogy of movies out of the TV show, that was also in the post-apocalypse. Yeah, everything future. still hits the fucking skids. Because they don't know what the fuck they're doing, and they should have left Highlander in one movie. Yeah, well, obviously. Huh. Everything we learned about Highlander indicates that we should not have made more Highlander. That that said, the Kurgan? Excellent Lex Luthor. Oh, Excellent Lex Clancy. Luthor. Clancy Brown is delightful. I, in everything. I've never seen him in a role I don't enjoy him in. But I want him as a legitimate Lex Luthor. Fuck Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, God. Or that his body God. double. The, yeah, no, no. Jesse Eisenberg is just a failed Mark Zuckerberg clone. We we all know this. Look, okay, right, so the right, evil right, doctor just... Facebook aside. Yeah. Like, why not? Clancy Brown versus the Trinity. Like, I still stand, I, no problem with Gal Gadot. No problem with Gal Gadot. She's a lovely woman. She does a great job. Like, fantastic actress. I enjoyed her in Wonder Woman. Lucy Lawless. Lucy Lawless is like 60 now. Don't give a shit! <laughs> Do not give a shit! I love... Well, she's taller than Carol! <laughs> that, is a, that is important. Like, she has the intimidation factor in regards to those two yahoos. And you go, well, she's older. That's great. You know what? Even just cast her as, like, Hippolyta. 
Give me sh give me Lucy, damn it! <laughs> Not related to the t-shirt at all, by the way. I was gonna make a Superman joke, but we kind of skipped over it, and that's fine. Yeah. So, okay, we have four beers. Yeah. What's your winner? Oh, fuck, you have to ask! <laughs> Dead or alive, you're coming with me. Right. I'm here. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not going to be an ass if you want. No, no. I'm, I, I will finish another octopus wads to fight. I could... There's a little part of me that just wants to buy a whole crate of it. That's fair. It's I, good. I mean, I suspect this is going to be in readily available for a few more months. Hopefully. keep cycling around in a way that it... it did not last year. Well, if not, this might just mean I have to, you know, buy a whole keg and get a keg fridge. And have a bus, go grab a keg. Like, this... It, GTA's taught us all of that, right? Yeah. Just walk over to the car, press triangle, you get the car. Look, that works. Look, as much as our robot friend has been done a wonderful job of storing all my cans and bottles, it may, it may be time for, for a keg fridge. In, in the, uh, Can in the, we mod him for that? No. Are you sure? Look, we would actually have to build chilling coils into the whole thing. No, but what I'm thinking is, like, he's functionally asleep. Yes. So we get just a conventional keg fridge, and we put him down on top of it, and just have the tap inside the dome. I don't think it's going to hold up to that level of modification. I stunk. It's okay, Co. Nobody wants your bone. Nobody wants this. But they're getting it anyway. Not sponsored by DC, but... And the red shirts to represent pleasant. It, it's sort of like how Tom Welling always had red plaid shirts on over his t-shirt. Yep. For like 10 years. Yeah, right? How did that show go for 10 years? You know what? They did it. Like, they told an interesting Superboy story. And Silver Age proves that those exist. Yeah. I'm not... Again, I'm not going to say that, oh, oh, 10 years is too much for small film. I... Fully well, admit. it might have been too much for the chick who's part of a sex cult. Okay, yes. Too much for Alice and Mac. Yeah. Like, I, I fully admit that I zoned out somewhere around season three. But apparently after that, they just sort of full on, it was like Superboy, but no costume. And there were all the other guys he could hang out with. Galen Merrick showed up as Doomsday. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and I don't, I'm not going to learn the actor's name. I've seen him in multiple things, but he will always be Galen Merrick to me because I will never let go how much I hate Force Awakens. Force Awakens? There is no D in that. I said Force Awakens. Force Unleashed! Yeah. Wow, this does hit you, Craig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, the thing, the thing about Sam Whitworth, I know his name. Do you? <laughs> yes, his name is Sam Whitworth. Whitwer? Yeah, Whitwer. Really? Yes. Now, here's the thing. Galen Merrick is. He's a giant freaking nerd. Well, of course he is. You wouldn't buy for the roles that he's been in. Like, he's been in The Mist. He's been in Smallville. He was Galen Merrick. <laughs> now, that the... was not intentional, by the way. This is how I count to three. <laughs> no. no. He's a huge nerd. Which means that he legitimately was super stoked to not not to be in the video game. That's another active role, but that his video game became a source book for the D twenty Star Wars game, and so he became a regular contributor to the only Star Wars Saga Edition podcast that was worth listening to. And I think he still hangs out with those guys now that they're on to uh, the. Uh, Fantasy flight game. Okay, then I I retract a fair like, bit like of he talks about he he talks about like the first time he shows up he talks about playing the West End game with his kid brother because he couldn't convince anyone else to play West End Star Wars with him and being 
super fucking um, keen on playing a Gond Feinsman. And I'm like, oh, you are the only person who thinks Gond Feinsman are cool. Don't you say that I'm right here. Okay. Okay. I was trying to decide between that and, uh, fuck, what the fuck is uh, Nyanos race? Celestins. Yeah. And I, I went with Celestin because we didn't have a pilot. Because apparently being short and hairless and have giant ears makes, makes you, you a, a pilot. pilot. Yeah, look at the Ferengi military <laughs> in those two TNG episodes where they really existed. And we're going to ignore all the other episodes. Tried to make them a legitimate threat. No, no, no. I think the most, I think the most legitimate threat Ferengi ever posed was in the Magnificent Ferengi. Well, yeah. Seven-man team. Unstoppable. <laughs> plus, plus, you're doing Armin Shimmerman Ferengi at that point. Well, and at this point, it's Deep Space Nine's Ferengi, and they know they're funny, but they also know how to write them. <laughs> well, everybody is... We have to be Armin Shimmerman, but... Yes. Compared to that, like, episode right after Farpoint where they encounter God on a bridge and Riker just talks to it and they're like, we too understand that you are a God on a bridge. And it's like, no, you don't. Fuck off. Uh, what? What part of the Ferengi design said, villain for TNG? This is, these are going to be our new claims. Yeah. Legitimately I, threatening. Menacing. Gigantic fucking ear. Like I, like, I understand. You look at an elephant, you're fucking terrified when it's charging you. Well, okay. Now, Uncle Gene had gone well and truly off the deep end. Oh, you mean Gene's lawyer? <laughs> no, Gene himself, because his graphic depiction of how, of how Ferengi sex works was a serious topic for the writer's room at any given time. Remember, Ferengi females have to be naked. Have to be. <laughs> like, there is... It's, I am hazard to throw around the word misogyny blindly, but there is a misogyny to that that I just, I don't even fathom. Yeah. Like, you invented clothing. You developed attire as a culture. And reasonably, some of this was protected from the elements and eventually became an aesthetic choice. Okay, we, we did that. Where along the way did you, okay... We have animal skins. Well, why do we have animal skins? Because we don't want to freeze to death. Okay, good. Good. I understand that. But women aren't allowed to wear those. Why? Because they need to freeze to death. After they chewed my food. Yeah. Like, like it's like, look, you, you have to, you do have to extrapolate your cultures out from just base development point. No, like, no, you don't. Well, Jean can say anything, and it's right. Okay, Darmok and Gelada Tanagra. Makes no sense, but it's a good story. It's fantastic, and it's an interesting linguistic experiment. The idea that a culture has become so dependent on metaphors is not as absurd now that we live in a world so codified with memes. Look, I didn't get it until I realized exactly how much of my day I can't get through without a future on my shapes. Right? Oh. Again, I'd buy that for a dollar. Dead or alive, you're coming with me. We've already employed memes over the course of this collective bit. Under the assumption the audience gets them. And if you don't get it, then you wouldn't reasonably get a metaphor established like, you know, Shaka when the walls fell, if you don't understand the language. That's the whole point to the episode, and that's why that episode is pure Star Trek. And then there's Mindy Kelling's character in Wrinkle in Time, who can also only communicate in quotes, but it's her trying to learn English via Bartlett's familiar quotations, except sometimes that character is allowed to speak normal dialogue, unlike the book, where it was the 60s, and 
you know, Madeline probably had a hard time coming up with familiar quotations, but Disney cannot be arsed to research, to wiki quote their whole way through a screenplay. And I don't like Wrinkle in Time, but you tell me you fucked up Mrs. Who? And I'm like, you have no excuse to fuck that up today. No, you have too much money to be able to allow that to fail. And by extension and in the negative, we have Bumblebee in Michael Bay's Transformers, who speaks in nothing but radio quotes and poor references through TV and audio, which was done far better by Eric Idle in Transformers the Movie as the Junkion. And that's because they time to craft bits and make interesting assessment. Eric Idle, wonderful Transformers the movie. Wonderful movie! For 20 minutes. 20 minutes. After which it slouches toward the end credits. After which you still get a bitch in soundtrack. <laughs> Look. Stan Bush is a great, great Can songwriter who wanted to make a Rocky soundtrack. Who, on Fort, who was of his place and time, but was not afforded the chance to be of his place of yeah. time to its fullest extent. Like, the man is so impossibly 80s, he should have had, he should have charted three or four times a year, right? Yep. Because everything he produces is so 80s. And it's not that, like I don't actively listen to it. Yeah, but but somehow he slipped through the cracks and only only made it on this movie soundtrack song that didn't sell to the boxing movie he wanted it to, but oh hey, these toy guys, they they're on to something, and this is gonna keep paying my wages basically into eternity, because apparently he shows up at, like, TF cons whenever they want him to. Oh, and everybody oh. fucking loves him. And like, that's cool. music, like, uh, Gen Con has guest of honor slots available to certain people anytime they want them. Like, like, Ed Greenwood can call anyone on the Gen Con board and say, I'm coming this year. And, guess what? Full fucking Full, full, giant, goddamn deal, because Ed Greenwood's there. Well, everybody, you're gonna get people showing up with backpacks full of Realms books. Oh, yeah. And, again, it's a great... I say that like I don't have backpacks full of Realms. Ed's a cool guy, and if he wants to talk, let him. And, you know, the Hick, uh, the Hickmans, <laughs> uh, Margaret Weiss, they can do the same thing. Yeah. So the idea that TFCon, you know, Peter, Frank, Stan, uh, hell, probably, uh... I feel like Judd Nelson, despite everybody's opposition to Rodimus, Judd Nelson probably, but, you know, the Vancouver crowd, like, the Drummond brothers, like, David K. David K. picks up the phone to the organizers of TFCon and says, yeah. Uh -huh. And they're like, all right, Mr. K, you're on your way. We'll set up, we'll make sure you have a hotel room, we'll make sure you have a per diem, and uh, three panels a day sound okay? It's going to be a fuck ton of softball questions. Well, two panels, one, two signing segments, and, and maybe some photo ops, one day, one photo op a day. I say that going full well, I would gladly get something else signed by Shatner. Hey, if Shatner showed up again, I'd bring my Star Trek collection. I'd be like, I need this signed bill. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Here, here's my $85. Nope. One of the few people that I haven't known since before I was 18 that is allowed to call me. Alright, so we've clearly decided our winners from here. Oh yeah, that was easy. That was easy. Oh, yeah. Easy as pie, but we still have these two. Split them in equal volumes? I don't... It's it's not fair for one of us to take the head of the mill street. God. 
I don't. Again, it's it's oh. it's so easy. One sec. So Mill Street, Mill Street, and I. Mill Street mattered to me once. Mill Street genuinely mattered to me, like the whiskey. Well, Tank House, Tank House has been my and favorite beer for as long as I've been allowed to drink. It's a good go-to. And I'm never going to get anything from Mill Street as good as Tank House. And hell, Tank House will stop being Tank House pretty soon. Because they're going to fuck with the recipe. It's not even going to be cutting corners. It's going to be, well, we're producing nationally now. So we need to spread out the resources. So we can't be as choosy about you know, each ingredient. Yeah. So we're going to get let in some less than amazing varietals into the mash. And I'm going to sit here and... You're going to be able to taste it. And I'm going to know. And... It's... It's not even like my favorite band sold out. It's like... My favorite band broke up. And... Somebody's still carrying them. And... The third drummer somehow got the name rights, and he's assembled a bunch of guys who do lame covers of all their hits, yeah. and produce new material that tastes like domestic beer. Like, this, this is my proof that they haven't gone completely to hell. Yeah. So last year, they made whiskey. Whiskey. And I will argue that it's rye because it's Canadian single malt. And fuck you, that's rye. No. I t you know me, I'm bitchy about this. Yes, I understand that you don't care about the actual ingredients in the mash. It's the same and as I will can't. argue that every American whiskey is bourbon. Fuck you. Which I'm sure the people of Kentucky are totally fine with you saying any whiskey produced in America is bourbon. It's corn mash crap. Fight me! Uh, I'd love to say this is the booze, but I seriously just, I will pick a fight off. But yeah, no, last year, they made a whiskey. And they made a whiskey. It's very limited run. Picked up two bottles, one for me, one for a friend of mine. And I'll get that to her when I get that. And it's made with beer. It's delicious. They can still choose to work magic. They can. But they have to choose to. And then it <sighs> Come back to a lot of people left yeah. when the lab the bat buyout happened. And yeah, I really I wish all of them well, I know. <gasps> Well, Jordan's local to us, and Jordan is a mad genius who just keeps piling interesting fruits on top of sour beer. Hey, you know what? It keeps working, and it keeps being delicious. It keeps being delicious. He's got barrels full of something, uh, some sort of bread that he hasn't tapped yet, and I'm like, open those for me, please. And you know what? You want to make another Russian imperial stout, I will drink it. And you want to make another Dre that is a reference to Dr. Dre, I will enjoy the shit out of it. You, you want to keep tweaking an American pale ale recipe and keep naming it after sequels to Planet of the Apes. Do it! Do that. Do that. I am waiting for Tim Burton Presents Planet of the Apes. No, 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 no. No. <laughs> that, movie, that movie was it's fucking terrible. And Helena Bonham Carter, and if you're watching this, I am sorry, but you are more attractive in the ape makeup than as a normal human woman, and that is very uncomfortable in experience. <laughs> Now, I don't think it has anything to do with the ape makeup. I think it's the fact that she is made up by Tim Burton when you see her. And Tim Burton's idea of makeup is to just shotgun black <laughs> grease and then soak and then have it rain on top of you. And then you do your scene. And when but, uh, she did Harry Potter, 
They were like, oh, we got Helen on bottom, bottom Carter. We should shotgun her with black grease and then drizzle her with rain. Yeah. Because that's just how she should look. Yeah, that's how she looks naturally. And I mean, but we it's a good evil wizard look. But that's almost a coincidence at that point. You know, and we can't forget Charlton Heston, the gun-hating monkey. <laughs> How the fuck have they got him to say that line? It's beautiful. Uh, I... I don't know. I legitimately do not know how they got Charlton Heston to do another goddamn apes movie. Well, it's easy. They're like, you're gonna be the opposite of your previous character. You're gonna hate guns and you're gonna blame mankind. He's like, dirty ape, blew it up. I was like, the fuck are you talking about? What's wrong with you, Charlton Heston monkey? What is your damage? Like, why? Why did you let Clint Eastwood yell at an empty chair? I don't understand. No, that was his fault. He was the head of the NRA at the time. It was his fucking fault. I don't think that I don't think Clint Eastwood was at an NRA convention. The NRA is a cult that controls all of its members. That is my conclusion. Good day, sir. <laughs> uh, I said good day, sir. Uh, you might be a little wrecked. Maybe, maybe, but that's okay. My mom thinks I'm advertiser friendly. Does she? Oh fuck no. Well, actually, I haven't checked. I haven't talked to her in a few years. That's fine. You're not done. Oh, God, I know I'm not down to anything. Speaking of that... Wait, I crap, know. I've sworn like seven times. Oh, we, we've all done it. I just we've all, it. there's two of us. <laughs> yes. Except for Ko. She's the most stable of the three of us, and she left. She, we're fucked now. The dog, the dog, the one who was supposed to set her as left. Yeah, the, the dog who was supposed to be the responsible adult. The responsible human adult. Look, look, she, she's 42 in dog years, which makes her the grown-up. She's the oldest of the three. <laughs> she's whining at the back door, I can hear her. Yes. She's whining because we're making noise. She actually wants to go out. It's not any of the, either that or there may be a squirrel. Maybe, but that's still not. So, we're we can see. We can remove my mustache and post. I, right, because no. this is fuck. <laughs> no. no. But I have the S! Yes, that doesn't mean that we you have a crack team of special effects of artists. Of one guy <laughs> a crack team. who just paint shot over. Because I'm sorry, that was just a drag tool. Like, fuck off, buddy. <laughs> no, no, he was clearly trying. Like, he was very clearly trying to get the, uh, God. Name of that bit of skin with the lines above the mouth. It's like the funiculum. I'm going to say yes, because my brain is offering me chode and taint, because it's a dick. <laughs> the funiculum, which is the, those two lines under your nose. He's trying to pull those from the last Superman movies. Like, he's trying to at least get that. See, I still think the easiest way to do that would have been to, A, not do that opening scene with the kids. Much as I love that opening scene. That opening scene was wonderful. That was, that was Superman well, through and through. Superman saves a bunch of people out of a burning building and then stops to talk to a pair of kids about hot. Well, it's like, it's for a video blog. Well, okay, if it's for that. Yeah, because he's Superman and he will take but well, that is that is so painfully Superman. I'm upset. I haven't seen that in comics already. Yeah, right. Right. right? Just this, this this idea of that. Hey, and and we've seen Thor stop to get a selfie. We've seen Thor stop to get ice cream. Yes, and it's like, but but Clark? the idea of Metropolis teenagers are like, holy shit, no. Look, man, I've, I've got a thing for school in, like, two weeks. Can you help me? Stay here. I want to get... We'll get a picture together. It'll be great. Like, like how, how much time does Clark have to waste stepping around talking to people for school projects? Well, 
And now that should be commonplace. Like in the old days, sure, snap a picture of Superman. It's a big fucking deal. Now, everybody wants a picture with Superman because he saved cats, and he saved people at burning buildings, and he saved people, whatever the fuck Lex Luthor is up to this week. And, but it's Clark. <laughs> so he'll find the time. Because yeah. it's Clark and Superman. Spider Man is friendly and he's in your neighborhood. But he also is compelled to leave very quickly. Because he has responsibilities. No, Superman. No, I just, I just love this idea of Danny and Luke are like, no, we'll sit around and wait for the police to show up so we can give statements. Yeah. And we don't know why no one else does this. Well, Peter why, King, why does no, why does Spider Man just tie everyone up and leave? Because legitimately, Spider Man is not a person. Spider Man is a persona. So at some point, they're going to need to get a legal statement from whoever is in that mask. And Peter doesn't want people to know that. But Superman, Superman is a legitimate citizen of the United States of America to the point where he has a doodad from the UN that says he can just do whatever the fuck he wants, and Supergirl's got the same thing. I know this because I have the action comics where they gave it to her. Also, the DC Universe has a different Fifth Amendment, yeah. where super personas can pursue a number of legal rights. I which is interesting because corporations count as people. So if Parker just made Spider-Man like an LLC... Well, he should have done that when he set up Parker Industries. Yeah, right? And, of course, that's fallen apart now because... Because Parker Peter can fuck off, well, whatever. Peter cannot be anything but a 22-year-old loser anymore. I was always okay with the idea of him being a high school teacher. Like, you tell me that well, Peter Parker... Not cannot Spider-Man. Peter Parker cannot escape Midtown High. But, no, Peter Parker doesn't want to. Peter Parker grows up, proves himself a phenomenal chemistry major, proves himself a capable scientist, well, and goes, what I want to do... Masters of Chemical Engineering. Yeah. I want to teach. And I what he does... Kids. What he does is not get his doctorate. It's not patent anything. No. He says, nah, nah. I'm going to take the year, get, get my education degree, and I'm just going to teach high school science. Yeah. And they're like, but Pete, you, you, are, you are smart enough. You you're can do like, so much more. You're the, like, like, Reed told you you're like the eighth smartest guy yeah. on the planet. At 14, you figured out how to create a small mechanical device that responds to your very specific psionic frequency, allowing you to track it around the greater Manhattan area. And Pete's like, I just want to give back to Midtown. And it's like, no, no, this is I'm, my home. I'm just going to hang out and teach kids how to light gummy bears on yeah. fire. I'm a kid from Queens, and I'll always be a kid. You left the whiskey on the table. So oh, what? Go. What? I left whiskey on the table. That's crazy. Why would I do that? Don't do that around me. I'm a bad person with no impulse control. So long as you don't drain the bottle, because I still got to give that to Liv. Hey. She is allowed to drink it now. So, experiencing something that is very limited run. Pause. It's on my fingers. It's, on my it's, fingers. it's delicious. It is so good. It's a tragedy that it is a limited run. Well, it but, might come back. Yeah, hopefully. I really think the response to this was good enough that if they just keep a general run going, great. But, so Superman. Because <laughs> we're here now, and... Fuck it. Superman. 80 years old this year, folks. The hero of heroes, quite possibly the icon of 20th century pop culture. Well, it's him or Mickey Mouse, right? And I would argue Clark, because Clark has been continuous. 80 years. Clark has gone through so many changes. New, on your newsstand every yeah. week. He's gone through so many changes, it's not even funny, but all of them, there is something just indelibly Superman that you can't do away with. You change the character, he goes back to it. He is always the immigrant trying to make the world a better place. He is the father figure for a pair of guys who lost their fathers by the age of like 16. 
Yeah. Like he is he is everything good and right and just in this world. Clark doesn't hate. And that's hate. Well, he could. But he and can't. it would be a terror, a sun god from Kansas that hates? It would be it would be dreadful. It would be nightmarish. It would be irredeemable. Look it up. It's wonderful. It's a great read. It's but, a really good read. And it closes nicely. Like, when he goes, no, when Kirkman went, I need to finish this, he just ended it, and it ended it right. Yeah. But, Superman can't hate, because he just looks at all of us and goes, you're no different than anybody else. Every human is just another person. Just another individual trying to get through. I, there's this great bit in Action 1000 where, because Action 1000 just like a shit ton of fucking Superman stories. Well, it's, it's, it's like 908 pages, right? Yeah, and it's great. But there's a bit where young Clark realizes he can die, and he goes out to the stratosphere, and here he is looking down at Earth. He's got his hands like this, and he's looking at Earth, and this is home. This is... This is all of it. Yeah. He can see, as an individual, the planet. And hear it. Yeah. Like, we're all... This is it. Like, I mean, Alan Shepard, you know, sitting on the moon, looking down at everyone and saying, everyone should see this yeah. so that they can understand... Perspective. All... Exactly how petty oh. and nonsensical what we uh, we fight over is. Yeah, you're fighting over and a strip of land that I do this. And and now we have a man do that when he wants. But as as there's air, he can also hear what everyone's talking about. Yeah. And oh God, it's it makes everything well so much. Like, like having an audio feed for that makes it even pettier. Well, Clark can hear it all. There's, okay, stepping away from Clark. There's a great bit in Joe Kelly's run of Dead. <laughs> yes. Dead Reckoning. You know the part I'm talking about. Oh. So, Deadpool is quite possibly the worst moral hero. Thank you. No, no, pour me some. Pour me some. I thought that's why we were grabbing glass. So, Deadpool, worst moral hero. Absolutely immoral son of a bitch. Like, again, they have had two years to establish that he's a bastard. Yeah, and he's, he's a bastard, a loony, and he has a box at home full of razor blades and hooks and saw blades and nails, and he will put a blind octogenarian in there. Or funsies. Or fun. Just, it amuses him. Wade goes this. This satisfies they've, they've explored the question of that part, that, that, that little tragedy that created him. Not even him. No. Some other guy. He stole someone else's tragic backstory. Yep. Wade is infinitely damaged goods. If you've somehow never read the Joe Kelly run and call yourself a Deadpool fan, get, do yourself a favor. Just or give yourself a gift. Just take, just grab. Deadpool Classic 1 through 3. And Dead Reckoning, if they... Because they've well, done the full six-parter of Dead Reckoning, right? Well, that that's in 2. That's okay. in 2, but... Just just the idea of... Read the entire lead-up. Just, just read Joe Kelly's era of Dead. Because... So good. You're, you're gonna see things. I, and Wade... Here he is. He's at the end of it all. He thought, over the course of this, he's gonna be a hero. He's gonna be... You know, he's going to be Captain well, America, he's going to be well, Spider-Man. The psychic raisin told him yeah. that he was going to save the universe. And, and they didn't tell him how. how. Wade was chosen to save the universe because Wade is the best killer galaxy. He is so, he is such a bastard, he can look at an entire planet experiencing bliss true universal understanding and oneness with everything else and sit there and say you're slack-jawed losers now. Yeah. Boom. So, I gotta, I 
We need to panic and, and screw yeah. and not tell us what to do. So here is Wade functionally at the apocalypse. And and the apocalypse is not even a whimper. No, it's it's, it's basic, a moan. It's a flying polyp that mind wipes everybody to mind inutterable bliss. And just absolute happiness. And the nearest guy with a clean moral compass is Captain Fucking America, who has already been possessed by this thing, who's using it as his avatar. And Wade is given the psychic lobster that the other guy, who was supposed to kill Wade and then kill this, failed to use because we came too obsessed with killing Wade. And it's on Wade's head. And Wade suddenly sees all of humanity. He sees an artist who will create a piece that will cause millions to work. And will just increase empathy in the world. And he also sees a homeless guy being beaten, black and fucking blue, by some rich kids because they don't see any value in him. And a plane will crash when this thing activates because everybody will be so blind with the pilot plane die on board. But and they'll die so Oh, they'll die smiling. And hospitals will shut down. People will suffer and people will bleed and they won't feel any of it. Wade Wilson, the worst person in the world. The, the guy, all he can do, all he has. His best skill is murder. Well, this is it. He can murder. He has murder. He's but, very good at it. But by quirk of cancer, he's immune to the bliss. And he can sit there and say, humanity's value is that we're all a bunch of screwheads yeah. and we should be free to be screwheads in any direction we want. And so he kills it. Pop. Which is the right answer. It's the right answer. But anyone else would have to pause and yeah. say, ooh, people are happy. Should I stop happiness? And Wade is... Old. And Wade is like... And Wade sits there and says, No one is capable of happiness without intervention from the outside. Yeah. So, hey. Happiness is nothing without sadness to compare it to. Peace is nothing without war to compare it to. Like, you know what? Yeah. Steve probably would have accepted Clark? Clark would have looked at that thing and went, no, I register what you are, fuck you. And that's why Clark hear humanity and go, there's problems here, there, 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 and there. I can't intervene on everything. I could try. Yeah, Barry to help. Oh, yeah. Like, Barry Allen, Wally West, Bart Allen, the Flashes. Why was... haven't you cured cancer, Barry? Why haven't you cured cancer, Barry? Yeah, because come on, Barry, you can do it. You could. You haven't. You could. But why don't you? That's it. Like, these are, for all intents, they're gods. Right? And why do the gods allow bad things to happen? Because bad things happen. Learn from them. all things. All things. Universal statement on a rare occasion where I will use this. Move towards entropy. Whole thing. We all age, we all die, everything gets worse over time. Well, but okay. then the worse gets better again well, because that's how this is animism. The king of Persia asks his wizard, I want a ring that oh will make God, me happy so when I am. This is it. King of Persia asks his wizard, Ring that will make me happy when I am sad. Give me pause. I am proud. And that made me what I am. And his wizard hands him a ring and says, This shall pass. My fist clenches, crack it open. Or I use it, use my. 
what, folks? Life is going to kick you in the ass. And yeah, we're getting righteously oh. philosophical. <laughs> Guess what? We're both philosophers. Like, I know that's startling. So here's, here's the story about us. This is what happens to us late at night. We drink. We rant about comic books. Yeah. And we talk about philosophy. Yeah. We discuss the we problems end, of the world. We're going to invite you into that once in a while. We hope you enjoy it. I really hope you like this. You can't finish that bottle. Like I said, I've got to give some of that to Liv. No, I, I know. I know. I will go. We'll finish <sighs> this in a minute. It is so hard to drink this, by the way, because the scent is wonderful. Yeah. It, this is the audio awesome. is on on this, by the way. You, chest, you tested this, right? Oh, God. Yes. Okay. We're, we're, we're good. We're good. Cool. We've done that before, by the way, folks. We've done shit where we've done like a full hour long bit and there's no audio. So as, as it stands, like again, we're 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 a bunch of weirdos. We're gonna talk about weird things and we're gonna do it all sorts of ways. And God damn that is good. Yeah. Um Whiskey. Whiskey. Whiskey, it's good for you. It is the waters of life for a fucking reason. Health Canada recommends that you have limit your alcohol to two drinks a day. Unless you've had three, in which case, bugger <laughs> it all. All bets are off. Go to town. Caesars, of course, don't. No, of course not. Of course not. Caesars are fair. But, no. I, here's a secret. Swing that back around. 80 years of a character has functionally not changed. They, Mickey Mouse has dropped in and out on the spectrum. Well, again, Steamboat Willie happens. Yeah. And that. Who, right. is, who is Mickey but corporate icon? Well, that's it. It's, he comes in and out, and yes, Mickey, there were a ton of shorts with Mickey. He, All of them older than any of us, and potentially your parents. Uh, there's a ton of Movies that feature him. And again, he's bigger shorts and they try to bring him back to TV once in a while. But his characterization but it, is all over the place. But at this point, they can't help but be bland with him. Well, Mickey is corporate mascot. Yeah. Like, Mickey in Kingdom Hearts is not Mickey in Fantasia, is not Mickey in Steamboat. Willie is not Mickey in whatever that weird. GameCube 2 series was? Oh, oh, the, the thing. The one where they brought back the dude with the brush? Yeah, yeah. Warren Spector, creator of Deus Ex, who hates being called creator of Deus Ex, <laughs> uh, decided to team up with Disney. Do something dumb that no one liked. Well, people seem to respond well enough to it, but putting it out on the cube and he was a bad ball. <laughs> Played those. But, no, Mickey, Mickey is a corporate icon. Mickey is three circles. Superman. Superman. Yeah. You know who Superman is. I don't have to describe Clark Kent to you. I don't have to describe Carl L to you. If you are over the age of seven, you fundamentally understand the difference between Superman and not. And if you're going to be one of those people who argues, oh, well, yeah, Clark's killed people before, a la Man of Steel. No. Well, Man of Steel and BBS were not Superman. Henry Cavill finally, finally got to play Superman. Well, okay. Superman kills Zod, I'll bully. Oh, that happens all the fucking time. That, I'm not arguing. And a better version of Man of Steel presents Zod better to explain why you have to kill him. But the well, idea... Yeah. But, no, no. You want you want Henry Cavill playing Superman. You look at him going, Oh, God. No. I want to be dead. This was all a mistake. <laughs> That's it. It's Maybe I should be dead again. Like, and it's... You, you, bring in the you, secret you, weapon. You wreck slain. You, you wreck... You get those guys, so I'll get the guys on the right. Um... <laughs> Full on fucking apartment building. A whole apartment building. Like never established before. And it's just like Yeah, Barry. That that's you you, you saved a truck full you, of Eastern Europeans. Good job, buddy. Good job, Barry. And you know you what? You helped. 
So before, before we saw Justice League, we chatted upstairs over Chili and whatever the fuck reading that night, saying, how would we bring in Superman in this movie? And of course, we had we had him face off against Mother, played by Ed Asner, because okay, of course, Granny Goodness has to be played by Ed Asner. <laughs> no, can't, and no one else. No one else. No one else. <laughs> Except maybe B. Arthur. Maybe, maybe. but she's dead. So, so Ed Asner. Ed Asner is the only option. So Granny Goodness, instead of Steppenwolf, because fuck Steppenwolf, not the band. The band, you're great. I love you. I love you. <laughs> but the the solution that we concluded was the easiest way to bring Clark in in that scene is Granny Goodness is ready to strike the kill. Like, this is the big scene. Everybody's done fucked. And boom! Superman. Hits her right into the fucking wall. And you're like, holy shit, it's Superman. And Superman's all there being Superman. And we watch Justice League. Steppenwolf's there with Zax. And he's like, I'm going to fuck me up a cyborg. And then, boom! Superman, Superman shows up and he saves the fucking day because he's Superman. And that's what Superman does. And Henry Cavill gets to play Superman. He took three fucking movies. Finally gets to play Superman. Because what does Superman do? He saves the day. Superman saves the day. He helps everybody. He's cool with it. He takes a minute to talk, takes a minute to slow down. Lois Lane shows up. It's, it's Lois. Lois. Like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna wax slightly poetic for a minute. <laughs> if you have never been truly, honestly, and deeply in love with somebody, you don't get Clark Kent, Lois Lane. You don't get it. And I'm not saying that as an attack. But it's, it's a truth. When there is somebody that you feel unquestionably attached to, it's just their mortal existence gives you value. And the idea of a world without them is not even an idea you can fathom. Yeah. Like, it's an idea where you start to go close to it and you just get blindly enraged. That is Clark Kent and Lois Lane. Superman will always save Lois Lane. That is a rule. That is a constant. That is even referenced in crises. Crises? Crises? I don't know. This comes back to the dominatrixes. <laughs> is it plural as dominatrixes? If there's any dominatrixes watching the program and you want to let us know whether or not it is matrixes or matrices, given that it is matrix plural, we would appreciate it. Otherwise, I'm going to have to find set myself. But, but I, I get that, you know, English has a habit of making stupid rules left over from pre less stupid. I'm going to phrase it that way. <laughs> sure, why not? But, yeah. But, yeah. Superman. Superman is always ready to punch the bad guy. He's also always ready to give the bad guy just a little bit of extra chance. You like, want to turn it around. Well, Superman is, if, if someone's up for a stern talking to, Superman, give that stern talking to. Yeah. It's your no-nonsense solutions to crime. Just don't hold the water in the complex world. Time travel and hyper-intelligent age. Yep. So Batman beats up every criminal he can find, and he arrests everyone that's got a weird fucking costume, and he locks them in Arkham until Joker escapes. <laughs> and <laughs> then everybody leaves with him. And they go, well, we should kill him, and that's never effective. So what does Clark do? So, Action 1000. Action 1000. Richard Donner and somebody else, and I'm forgetting mostly because of Frank and because I was impressed with Richard Donner with the comic book, Richard Donner and somebody else, and I think it was Dan Jurgens. And if I'm it wrong, was, I'll, it was. I'll look it up. Thank you. So Dan Jurgens also great. Like not not he ripping is a on. Good, he is a good comics man. He is, he is a good comic writer, and he's a great Superman writer, and he gets it. They wrote a combination story of Clark addressing Butch Mason after the cover of Action Comics. So Remember in that 
Yeah, and no, you don't. This one. You're not a Saudi prince. You yeah. can't afford that yeah. book. It's terrible, except for the part where he punches bankers who want us, who but, want America embroiled in Europe. Well, thankfully, they do reprint that in the Actions Deluxe hardcover to pick up this year, and it's good. Read it, enjoy it. Plus, it's got you know, it's it's got Zatanna's dad, and it's got Human Target. It's got Vigilante and Human Target. Really interesting. Like, seriously, if you've never read Human Target, read it. It's, it's quite the concept. But it, except you can't with that by like, 50 years of books where he is the B character. Fair. But, so, in the course of the comic, Superman, well, Clark asks Lois out on a date, and she goes along with him, and he's bad at it because he wants to dance with her, but this brute named Butch gets involved, and and then Clark just kind of fucks off, and then Butch kidnaps her, and then Superman shows up, fucks up his car, and you know the scene? You know the scene! It's Action Comics 1, the cover. I'm, I'm going to stand this way and be... And you throw a car at a rock. <laughs> yeah, right? We all know this. Even if you don't know this, you know this. You're going to look at this cover and be like, wait, do you know that? So, in the comic, Butch takes his car to a mechanic. And the mechanic's like, car's fucked, dude. Dude, it, it looks like someone picked it up. And, and smashed it against a rock. It's like someone picked it up, bending the chassis on the midpoint, and then fucked it up with a rock. But, so Clark shows up after Butch leaves and goes, look, I looked into your past. You've been through a bunch of criminality, and you're also an orphan. You're a poor kid who's been through a bunch of shit. So I'm going to give you a chance. You can choose to be a better guy, or you can choose to be a criminal. And Butch is like, you're making this sound really easy. And Clark's like, it is that easy. And fucks right off. And the end is Butch spraying kids with water with the fire hydrant because the orphanage they, he lived at was always too hot and never had a pool. So he's choosing to be a better guy. I'll be right back. But yeah, Superman! No. Look, look, I think we're drunk and talking about Superman. So that gonna... means we continue. Damn. No, that means we call it a night. <laughs> No, we're calling it a night. Thank you for staying this long. Uh, we're sponsored by Humble, by the Humble Bundle. Uh, Humble Monthly is a great service that lets you uh, build up your games library, try a bunch of things you might not have considered. It's very affordable. And again, a bunch of the profits get shared with a charity in our case. Uh, if you go through the link again, down below in Doobly Doop, you can take a look at uh, uh, joining up for their subscription bot model or trying out any of their games. But either way, some of the money ends up in the hands of Children's Miracle Network Hospitals, which is a great bunch of things because childhood sickness is terrible. And if it wasn't around, Jim wouldn't be alive. So, again, I, thanks I, for going I, through I, all this. And the title uh, for this show is Two Drunk Idiots Talk About Superman. <laughs> okay, that's one way to do it. But we're going to sign off. <laughs>